just want to take a moment to think about the fans and the staff of Bury Football Club. Nobody should ever have to go through this. Nobody should ever have to see their club die. I think the EFL really do need to take a long, hard look at themselves to make sure that this never happens again. If you don't have a song, you may as well not go to the pub at all. Lads, lads, lads! Watch this! Welcome to our brand new podcast. We are Travelling Shoreham Lads. This is Travelling Blade. This is Shore and View, and I'm in good nick. So we're going to be doing a monthly podcast. Obviously, we're in August, but we may sometimes not be together, but we're going to try and get together as much as possible. So, lads, we're in August. Uh, this is actually going to be recorded just before the Chelsea game, so we don't know the score, so don't tell us. People um, in Australia, pipe down. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, August, how's it gone? Spec bloody tacular. I'm happy with four points from three games. Yeah. I think anybody who looks at it realistically has to be. Absolutely. I mean, everybody says we've had an easy start. It's, it's Bournemouth, Palace and Leicester. Bournemouth's it's a difficult yeah. start. It Bournemouth was a really... And away from home as well. Yeah, everybody creams over Eddie House football, so we've... Exactly. Come away with a 1-1 draw in a game where we, theoretically, I think we deserve to win it. Yeah. Absolutely. It's like a hard time for the club as well, like with Wilder and the players like finding their feet. So it reminds me when we first came up to the championships, like you're trying to gauge the opposition going like right how good are they like we know they're going to be decent but I would tell what you know like sort of find out how you know how much we can attack and get away with obviously yeah. not as much as last year but try and get it's hard to gauge so it's like a transition time for the club and we've done the best out of the three promoter teams all right we haven't had Liverpool and Spurs but it's not our fault that we've got slightly exactly. easy teams but still mm. And at anyone in the Prem. You look at Leicester, I, I don't think you can take Leicester out of an equation as being, I, I, I don't think they're Liverpool level. Yeah. Spurs are not totally bright. No. So I think you look at them, and also I think with these teams that are coming in, apart from a really quick counter-attacking play, which we're not used to, have yeah. we seen anything we're not used to? Not really. Not really, no. It's like, I think if you watch games and go, could this be a championship game from last year, I think you can get away with it. Like, if you think back, I think... Like I just think like if I think back to like Leeds away last year, we've not seen anything as hard as that yet where we've been thinking no. shit we're like like back to the wall. So yeah. until we face something like that or Little we'll more. just get torn. <laughs> yeah, we will get one of them. Yeah. We'll probably go tomorrow at Chelsea. Tomorrow at Chelsea. <laughs> YouTuber, um, I'll not mention any names, Satch, I'm going to be on the not him, <laughs> but their dad. They, <laughs> yeah. uh, he turned around and he said, this is a game where Tammy Abraham can have some fun. Well, I'm not being funny, didn't we play Tammy Abraham last season? We did. Did he have any fun then? No. Exactly. So, no. We, we've got nothing to, we, we can't win arrogantly and think we've got nothing to fear or nothing to worry about, it's a premiership, and it's Chelsea away, it's a big game. Yeah. But should we go in there all defensive minded, but we can go in there and have a go at it? The only thing I would say about Tammy Abraham is I do feel like when he plays against the kind of um, the Premier League teams that have been there for years, he seems a bit nervous. But yeah. obviously, when when they played Norwich, he's like, "Oh, I've played these last season." He scored against them last season, though, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think he'll I think he'll be uh, at home against us. Yeah. He'll be thinking, "Oh, I can I can do this," because yeah. he seems like he's quite a nervy sort of player. Yeah. Obviously, with penalty miss not so long ago. So he's uh, still young, isn't he? Yeah, he's still yeah. young. Um, I do think they'll play Tommy Abraham, though. I don't think they'll, no, they can't. they'll play Giroud. They, they're no. building for the future, aren't they? Yeah. To be fair, like, yeah, it's still Chelsea. They're, they're a great side, but it sort of thing reminds me of like, Man U. They're like, telling me disrespectful, like, almost like a shadow of what they were. Like, if you look mm. at them now, they haven't got Hazard. They haven't got um, Costa up front. If they had Costa up front tomorrow, I was like, right, we're probably going to lose 3-0. Yeah, and I'm right. not even going to be annoyed. It's just going to... Exactly. Walk past us. Mm -hmm. Same with the Ad Hazard, but they haven't got them, so I think it probably gives us more of a chance. I mean, yeah, the likelihood is that we'll probably still lose and I'll snap your hand off for a point, but yeah. they're not as good as they once were. And you know, 
I'm not, I, I still don't know what to make of Lampard in this division. I don't even think he was that good as the Derby manager, really. No. He just had that one game at Ellen Road and that was it. And no, that was enough for me. That, yeah. That, that, he, and that was very good. <laughs> <laughs> that, that did it for me. I like the guy. I've always thought he was better than Gerard. Really, yeah. Controversial one. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, it, management wise, he's he's been fast tracked, hasn't he? And yeah. I think we all know why as much as I like Frank Lampard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because he's Frank Lampard. And because he. Imagine if it had been Gerard, Sky Sports would have fast tracked him even quicker. He'd yeah. be a Liverpool manager by now, they'd have sat clocked, so he could have been in. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's one of those. He's not cut his teeth, and to come in for a Chelsea job where they've got a transfer ban, mm. that's hard. That's the hardest job in the Premiership. And I, that's he wouldn't have got that job though if it weren't for that transfer ban, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah I agree. I agree with that. No one would have. Well, no one would have took it. No one would have took it. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, I think I think this is the perfect time for him to come in and be Chelsea manager though, because yeah. he's got no expectations. He can bring through the young lads. He's had Mason Mount all last season, so he knows what he can yeah. do. I'm not saying Mason Mount's the finished article right now. No. He's not. N- not by a long shot. But um, I do think that they've still got your Pedros, your Williams. These players are going yeah. to come into their own. They've not had a great start to the season. Obviously, Williams has been injured. Pedro's just picked up an injury. So they've still got a lot of uh, a lot of lads in there that they've had for years. Ben, you live down London. So yeah. do you get any interaction with Chelsea fans? What's their opinions? Not really. I mean, well, I suppose to be fair, like... With the, the job that I do down there, I have worked in like one of the um, VIP restaurants at Stamford Bridge, done that quite a bit. Yeah. And they seem like um, a fair bunch, and I mean, there's one guy who said, Get on with it, alright, he got on with him, but he always called the Sheffield and that. Oh, uh, right? that's me mm. done. <laughs> I don't like him. <laughs> They're all doing it though, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. I know the, the, the flip side of that though is like, although it's like, oh yeah, we're united, the, the thing is, like, hopefully, if we can sustain this, where we're in there and they're just below. Yeah. There's going to be a whole generation that just knows Sheffield as us. Yeah. And goes, what? There's, there's someone else in Sheffield. Yeah. Who hey, are these? Little plug for myself here. I'll probably cut this out, but there's only one team in Sheffield according to the people in Prague. Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> but it's like I think they seem okay. To be fair, I think I think they get frustrated quite easily. Like I remember when Conte was in, and they were yeah. like they were probably like third or something. Mm. Like, I think he had that really good season with them. Like where they walked the league or something, and the yeah. season after they came, like I don't know where they came, but they, they weren't even in the top two. Yeah. And they're like really annoyed. And like meanwhile, we're just like trying to like battle out in the championship. I'm thinking you don't know what you've got. Yeah, yeah. You don't know what you've got, but I suppose you adjust, don't you? If you've if you're Chelsea, and you've well at least since Abramovich has come in, you've yeah. been up there. Um, you're probably expecting to be top two mm. every season or something, but yeah. it's like they don't know. I think you know they've got. They're going to be looking at us at three points, but you sort of going to do, you know, if we were the league below and we were yeah. playing Wednesday, you know, mm. <laughs> you're going to be. I think every team's looking at us with glary eyes and, you know, we've got this. Everyone. Yeah. And I, I hope they do continue doing that. That's what I hope we get every single game. Yeah. Yeah. Less pressure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Should, we, should we talk about Bournemouth? What happened at the first game of the season? Um, what, did it, what, we, what did we do right? What did we do wrong? <laughs> Uh, what did we do wrong? What did we do wrong? Um, Didn't put it away. You know. That first chance in the first few seconds of the game, we could have fucking yeah. So we could have flipping walked it from there. <laughs> <laughs> you clicked for minutes in the second half. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> beep, beep, beep. <laughs> now it, it, we have got, and it bleeds on into other games. We've got to be more clinical. Um, I think there were chances in that game where I don't want to be overly critical of the strike partnership, but Robinson and McGoldrick are still finding the feet mm. uh, in the Premiership, whereas I think other players are more suited to putting those chances away. Yeah. yeah. And if we're going to stay up, we need to be more clinical, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's my only gripe from that game, really. Yeah. McGoldrick's not really a prolific striker, anyway. Is he? No, it's an old Yeah, I think yeah. with McGoldrick, though, it's like something I found last season when we, we came on trial and he started playing those first few games mm. um, was that. He one of them where you go, he had, a, he had a great game, but he couldn't score. Yeah. And he, he was a really slow starter. Yeah. But then when, when he started, Scoring like goals. he got the odd penalty like, at like, QPR, yeah. Millwall. All right, he missed against the Pigs. But he started, and then you're like, right, I found my feet then. Yeah. Next minute, he's dinking it in over Derby. And yeah, that. yeah. So I think, I think it was just for me, I don't know why, but when he has that season break, he comes back. Yeah. I think someone else said... Um, that before it was at us, they were similar. Like, yeah, he, he couldn't at the start of the season. He was always just struggled with finishing. But I think once he finds his feet, yeah, hopefully it'll be okay. But I think, like last season, it took him a while, but ended up mm. second top scorer or just behind Billy. Yeah, I think he has maybe a dodgy preseason. Uh, he has good preseason games, and then 
I don't I don't know, it could be nerves, it could just be the fact yeah. that he's we're not playing premiership teams, we're not playing championship teams, so he kinda of comes into it with maybe a bit leggy. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. I mean I think we've got a lot of competition now. Yeah. Um up top like you've got I mean, we've just signed McBurney who's like you know, is our record, is a Scottish record, something like that. Um we've got Robinson in who looks lively, you've still got Sharp and it's like I think if you're David McGaugh you're thinking there's only really going to be two positions. I mean, you probably could play in that. Yeah. What I now call the Duffy role, the way I suppose yeah. Luke Freeman's going to probably play this season. But we've not well, seemed to really use it, have we? No. Luke Freeman role, which would yeah, be small bit guts me a bit. Inverted, yeah. Bit. yeah with uh, Norwood sat back rather yeah. than in front. Like a deep line playmaker. For yeah. Football yeah. manager terminology. <laughs> 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 we all we all played it. Hmm. But um, yeah, it, for me, it does gut me a bit that we're not using the Duffy role, as you call it, because it'll yeah. always be the Duffy role. It will always, yeah. be, always yeah. be the Duffy role. We miss you. We <laughs> do. Come back, you will be safe. All is forgiven. Ignore what your wife said. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. Ain't seen she in gold digger. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, with, with that role, it's like Lee Smoosa as well. He's not really had a look in. I forgot, yeah. But he looks nippy as hell. He so I heard it was like overweight and... <laughs> we were going to be one and it was always going to be. Yeah. <laughs> it was like overweight and nowhere near fitness and that. He probably still does need to get fitter and more games. Yeah. Mm. But he looked far... I was surprised he even came on. Yeah. Um, excuse me, from what I'd heard from people before. Um, obviously that was... It sounds bad to say that was only Blackburn. With all respect, we're going to be playing... Well, we've got Chelsea tomorrow, so... Mm. How he fits into that, but... Should be interesting. Like I say, he looks lively. He's, he's got... A decent, decent bit of size to him as well. Um, you know, which like. What even after the weight loss? <laughs> yeah, and um, I think like he, he seems quite broad as well. Like mm. a decent bit of height, like not too tall where that's his only mm. thing, but so, not yeah. sharp where he's having to be relying on being in the right place. So that's the one thing that winds me up. I won't say winds me up with the wrong word. Is uh, my only gripe with Robinson is he's a bit flimsy on the ball, and your yeah, defenders in the Premiership are strong. The physical specimens and yeah. it does get nudged off easy. Yeah. Do you think he needs to bulk up maybe a bit? Yeah, possibly. I do think he's intelligent on the ball. Yeah, sure. You know when he uh, McGoldrick would play in such a deeper role um, yeah. for me, well, especially in the Palace game, he seemed to get forward a lot more in the Bournemouth game, but for Palace, we kind of sat us as three midfielders really deep and then McGoldrick were like playing in that kind of attacking midfield role and, and when it got up to uh, to Robinson he was trying his best to hold it up yeah. as much as possible and bring other lads into the game. Yeah. But when you when when this so, he's so isolated, he's been yeah. so isolated. But yeah, I do think he is quite intelligent on the ball when he gets it. Um, but with McGoldrick and Robinson, I don't feel like we've got um, a so, Billy Sharp or a, or a McBurney, someone who's going to pick up pick the ball up, have a go, and and you feel confident in him having yeah. a shot. Because Robinson, the only real shot that I remember him having in the first few games is that one against um, Palace where he rocked balance and put it on yeah. the bar. And from there, I, I kind of never expected him to put ball back in there. Mm. If it were Billy or, or maybe McBurney or someone like that, who scored a lot of goals. Yeah. And I know he, he had a, a pretty bad injury last season, or, or he was kept out for yeah. quite a few games last season. So he's got a, he's, he's getting used to the team, he's getting used to um, the Premiership, He's going to get some... Of course, to be fair though, didn't Robinson like play as like an out-and-out -out winger? He did. Yeah, he did. Last season, so I mean, I know it's the extra forward, but... He played, if you're like now, a, he played like a kind of a cutting forward, didn't he? Yeah. He used to stay out on the wing, then he cut inside and play across rather than mm. dipping out wide. Yeah. But, yeah, he, he, went, and he went a top striker. But like now he's an out-and-out -out striker for us, yeah. so it takes some getting used to. It is like a different role altogether. Mm. I think it's a step up as well. No disrespect to Preston, but the they relied on knocking it out wide and crossing it in whereas we we do the same but we've got a far more patient build-up play than mm. i say preston had so it's more measured as well more measured yeah. crosses and stuff like that yeah frustrating at times yeah it is yeah, very yeah. frustrating at times. yeah i do feel like in the last game we kind of got a little bit nervous and just put the ball in the box as much as possible mm. we didn't pass it around as much in the first half we were quite poor with us passing we gave it away so much yeah but in that second half, as soon as kind of, uh, we were putting balls in the box in the second half, as soon as McBurney got the header, we were just sl uh, putting balls in the box yeah. all the time. And I kind of don't want us to lose our identity and just be one of them teams that just chucks in the box. 
Well, sometimes we can keep his identity and we'll still get called a long ball break in the box at five seconds. Yeah. Deep, as yeah. we've seen from Roy's view. Hi, yeah. Roy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah. So, um, anyway, we were talking about Bournemouth, weren't we? And then we kind of moved on to, to, uh, to Leicester and a bit of Palace. Um, against Palace, I thought we were excellent from oh. from minute one to. Yeah, I think that's been our best. I mean, I didn't see the Leicester game, but from what I've liked, the highlights of it and that. I think that, alright, we've only got three games to go off, but that was, I thought that was a really solid performance. I think for me, that has to be like probably the performance so far. I just thought it was, I thought it was quite solid and that. I didn't feel that nervous in keeping out no. uh, the leaders. At like times, in the, even like in the champion, even like in League One, where we've had leads and you're just thinking, this is going to, you know, they're going to score here any moment. But I just felt really confident with that. everything they threw into the box, we were just heading mm. out. I still felt like that, even though we were comfortable. Yeah. I, I'm always going to feel like that in the Prem. Until we kind of establish ourselves as a Premier League club, I'm always going to feel like every time they play against Paul, he's going to score. It's kind of yeah. like the Wednesday feeling. Do you know when you're at Hillsborough oh. or even at Bramall Lane? Like, it doesn't matter. How good Wednesday are, how good we are. We were 4 to up, and I still thought they could have come and two more in the <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it, that's it. But in the Premier League, it's kind of amplified a lot more yeah. because there's a lot better players. Exactly. But against Palace, we defended so deeply, but it sounds negative, that, but it wasn't at all. It wasn't a negative kind of defending, though, was it? It, it was progressive defending. Yeah. We were in the face rather than sitting back, come on to me, come on to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So rather than letting sit, sitting deep and letting them push onto you, we kind of sat a little bit deeper than normal, but when they came to us, we pushed out to them. Yeah. And yeah. I'll, I'll never complain about that. That's no. the kind of defending I like. I'm a bit biased towards that type of defending because I can't stand negative defending. Yeah. No. Um, I'd always prefer to get into their face because they don't like it. No, no team likes it. If you no. look at every good team, Leeds didn't like it. F- fair play to Leeds. They were only ones last season I'd say combated it. Yeah, they, well, they were very in your face as well. Yeah, exactly. It kind of clashed on each other. Yeah. Norwich didn't like it. The Sky Sports favourites. They're playing better football than anybody else in the league, apparently. Yeah. But um, they didn't like it. Aston Villa didn't like it. No team liked it. No. And, and we could see the Crystal Palace, especially Zaha, hated it. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering with Zaha whether he was going to be one of them because I've seen him play, and obviously he gets he gets uh, face on when he's getting fouled a lot. Sometimes he kind of picks himself up and is like, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and score against him here. Yeah. And sometimes he just kind of goes into his shell, and he definitely went into his shell against us. I I did. He didn't seem like the him. same player. Yeah. It's like the fact that, like, you know, um, fair play to him, like, uh, Baldock and Bash just reduced him to yeah. nothing. Like, you know, I remember that one great uh, challenge from Bash. I think he, like, danced into the box and just really good slide tackle, you know, mm. didn't foul him, whatever. And it was just, he wasn't getting any any freedom down that, um, is it the, the, yeah, the lefty yeah. place? Yeah, he was, yeah. So he weren't getting anything of that. And I think, I think there's, like, a few other players they've got that are, like, Townsend can be really tricky and a really good player on his day. We sort of kept them, I think we kept them quiet as well. I think, yeah. first off, I think there were times where we reduced them to just playing counter attack as well. Mm, yeah. Just having, because we were like, we were fairly, the times like, you know, when we'd push up a bit. Because I've noticed now that like Norwood sits quite deep. Yes, he does. Yeah, so, and um, there were times like that you're just thinking, oh, they're just having to like try and hit down those flanks and then wait for someone to be in. And they were sort of firing blanks, really. Yeah. They kept firing yeah. all these crosses of the box, but. No, it was fine. None of, none of their balls were finding anyone. No. You know, like Ben Teke, like it says, Ben Teke is white. Man. <laughs> <Shit is water. laughs> We've got John Lundstrom. Ben Teke is white. <laughs> Play with them. Right, okay. For me, everyone will be wanting to say Lundstrom. They will. And don't get me wrong, he's proved everyone wrong, hasn't he? Yeah, he's as ready to throw him. Yeah. <laughs> he's proved everyone wrong, hasn't he? Like, where did this come from? Mm. I think, I think yeah. he's just kind of been given more of a license to kind of do what he wants because when we first signed him or when he first first came in he replaced Coots everyone yeah. expects him to be Coots yes. and yeah, he just yeah. wasn't that player at all so now we've got a Coots if you like him. I didn't, he and, does and remind him. me of Coots like it's sort of partially in the way that he plays not that Coots test but the fact mm-hmm. that everyone used to hate him because everyone hated Coots I remember before he was under. Everyone used to hate. I used to hate Coots as well. It's horrendous. And then he became. We're all guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. And then he became like God under Wilder. Yeah. And I think maybe Lundstrom could be the second coming. Possibly. Everyone hated him. Thought he was crap. Didn't give him a chance. Yeah. Another Mario Mushroom moment. Yeah. Yeah. Proved us wrong. Well, yeah, it's not Lundstrom. All that just. 
I mean, this, these mics don't even work, so I can't hit him with it. <laughs> these are just props. <laughs> Simon Moore for the penalty set. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, I think George Baldock. I, I thought Edna Stevens was going to be kind of the shining light this season. Yeah. We're going to get a lot from him because back in the last season, he was incredible. Yeah. But George Baldock, where's it come from? I thought he was going to be the weak link this season. I thought I him and Bash good. were going to be the weak link. And Bash obviously gave the ball away against Leicester. But other than that, he's not, he's not embarrassed himself in the prep. No. But George, he tackle on Zahar as well. Yeah, exactly, but, but, yeah. But, but George Baldock, everything is just... He's improving in every single department. He's defending so much better. He's um, positioning so much better. He's crossing. He's just... Oh, that film at Bernie was just beautiful. It, I, I've, I've not seen him play this well. He just gets better and better every week he plays. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more of him, if I'm honest. Really, I'm, I thought we were going to try and bring in another right wing back because it's mm. difficult to replace Basham. Yes. Uh, or Jack O'Connell. We're not going to do that, hopefully. But it's difficult to replace Basham. Do you go for a, a, a right back, a big right back, or do you go for a centre back who's a bit more mobile? But with a right wing back, it's a lot easier. Especially if you said to a right wing back, you're going to go forward a lot. This yeah. Time. It'd be like, you're like defending. Yes. You don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Bullock's definitely pulled his finger out. Fair play. From where? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's for a separate <laughs> So thank you very much for watching. Make sure you go across to Shore and Views channel and Travelling Blaze channel and uh, and subscribe to them too. Um, we're going to be doing the second part on Shore and Views channel. Um, so yeah, go go over there right now. And uh, yeah, what 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 do we do? Staying good, Nick. Staying good, Nick. Staying good, Nick. <laughs>